Hello all and welcome back to another Model Railway video. Now today it is going to be another unboxing video. The locomotive I'm going to be looking at has only just arrived today so I'm really keen to get stuck and have a look at it. It is not a new tooled locomotive, it's been around for a wee while now but it's the livery which is brand new. So we'll get into it and have a look at it. I haven't opened it yet so I'm really keen to have a look. So here is the locomotive and it is Hornby's Ruston 48 and it's in the new GCR livery. I don't really know much about this livery yet, I haven't really done any reading on it, but it is a new livery, nice green livery. So we'll have a close look at this machine, I'll open it up and uh, of course we'll give it a run and it'll be running from brand new condition, I haven't opened it, I haven't run it, I'm very keen to have a look. So. We'll get into it. So, let's open it up. Ooh, you can immediately see one thing. Look at the green on it. Like the box shows it's a little bit of a limeish green, but look at it in the packet. Oh, this thing's going to be good. I'm just going to put the cover to one side and turn this upside down without it going out of focus. Hopefully, it won't. Generally, red can be a bit of a problem with this camera. There we go. So, let's take a look what we've got. We'll have a look at what we've got. So this is a common thing. I've got an other Ruston 48 locomotives and it just shows you, um, I'll read it. So it says, please note, you need to ensure that the front and rear sockets are pushed into the chassis before attempting to remove the body. And what it is meaning is you've got these little pockets for where the wires plug in from the wagon, which I'll show you shortly, um, this is just for more pickups, and they've just got to be pushed in in order for the body to be removed, is because they're on a little loose fitting, so yeah, that's what that's for. And then you've got your standard um, instructions, 48DS and flatbed wagon, and the reason these have a flatbed wagon, as I said, it's for pickups, is because as you can see it's a very small like can I open this? There you go, and that's the diagram. I don't know if I ever looked at my um, instruction manual for this thing, or my other ones. But yeah, shows you the underside where it um, connects, shows you the body removal. Look how tiny the chassis is on the thing. Oh, it looks so cool, it looks so dinky. And then it shows you your DCC socket, your couplings, and you've also got a bit that you can plug in on the front to fill in the empty space on the um, buffer beam if you don't want a coupling in there. So that is what that's for. So that's my instructions, and if I fold it the, the right way over, no, doesn't matter, I'll put it to one side. Oh yeah, I have done. Right, okay. So I'll take it out of the box and then I'll reposition the camera to show you it up close. But let's slide it out of its little sleeve and take a closer look at this thing. So that's the plastic sleeve off. And it's got your little detail bag. And it comes with, how many couplings has it got in there? It's got three couplings. So one coupling will be for the um, front end of the loco. Well actually there will be two couplings for the loco and then one for the wagon because the wagon's slightly different, and then it's got two blanking plugs in there. Right. Let's have a look at this. Oh, I love that colour. Oh, gee, that's gorgeous. Sorry, I'm getting overexcited. Getting overexcited, I do that. Let's have a look at this. And you've got to be very careful when you lift them. When they come fitted, they come with a drawbar, but you've also got the option of the coupling as well. Oh, that's cool. Now, for some reason, I have noticed one fault already. That plug should not be there. It should actually be in the body. And I'm going to have a cl close look at that in a moment to see what's going on there. But that's not meant to be like that. The one on the backs, gee, it looks pretty much the same, actually. They're just out a bit too far. I don't know why that's split like that. I didn't have that on my other one. So, out of the box, that's very interesting. It's very, very interesting, as a matter of fact. 
But yeah, we'll have a good look at that in a moment. But as you can see, the colour, ho ho, that's absolutely stunning. So I will plop it down there. I'm now going to move all the packaging out of the way. We'll take a closer look at this thing up close. I said it twice, but I will. And yeah, we'll have a good look. Here we go. So there we go. That is the loco on the white background. Now, unfortunately, this problem with these um, plugs has not been resolved. I've managed to push this one slightly further in, but that's as far as it goes without its stopping. I don't want to force it because I don't want to break anything. So... We're just going to have to see what happens with that one. It's a bit disappointing considering it's a brand new out-of-the-box locomotive. But at least I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to affect the performance of the thing. But we'll find out soon enough anyway. So, we'll start with the side of the loco and have a look at the details. So, we'll start with the lettering and the plates. So, number one is this locomotive. It is GCR number one, I would imagine. It's got a nice little plate there, which is gold on the outside, then you've got the gold number one, and then black on the sides of the one. That looks really nice. And then underneath, you've got the GCR print, and this is done with the three-dimensional effect. That looks really nice, the yellow on the green. And I like the fact with all three of the plates or prints that are on the side, they're all in different colours, so it just makes them all stand out individually. You've got the common Rustin and Hornsby plate on the side and that has been really well done. You've got another little plate up there, I'm not sure what that is and there's another one there, I haven't actually seen what that one is, I can't see it from where I am, you might be able to see it on the camera but yeah, nice and finely done and you will be able to read those if you have a magnifying glass or you look real close, they will have words on them. So, there's plenty going on on the cab, you can see they've got the um, clear plastic there for the windows and you can also see how this one's been done to make it look like it's got the sliding window that looks really nice you've also got a black lining going around these windows and on the one on the door that looks really really nice and you've also got a little tiny door handle there it looks really cool it's painted in silver it looks nice you've got lining also around the door itself that looks really really good as well plus the addition of separately fitted metal handrails which are painted black they look really good as well on the um, nose of the locomotive you can see that there's all sorts of rivet detail divider lines where panels would be on it where you'd open up to get to the motor you can also see the fine little vents there they look really really nice and you can also see from this angle you can see the little radiator cap and a little fuel cap there as well and there's other bits up there which I'll show you in a moment from the front view the frame is not really painted it doesn't have any painted detail but it's got some nice rivet details the steps that lead up to the cab you've got the really nicely fitted Rustin style wheels with the four holes in them they look really cool when they're ticking over when going around the track and you can also see the buffers which are there and there they look really nice and you can just see the start of the buffer beam where that red plate is on either end as well. You can also see the sanders and the brake blocks fitted as well. They look really nice. We'll turn it front on now, have a look at its the front view. And again, I really like this, um, how they've done the plates on this. I'll zoom in on it. I'll see if I can zoom in so you can see it a bit more clearly. Let's centre it. But you can see the little Rustin plate which is on the front with the red background with the white border and you've got the white writing. That looks really nice. Just push that in. You've also got this really nicely done grill. That looks really, really good. You've got, I believe those would be lamp brackets possibly. I'm not sure what those are for. But they look like lamp brackets to me. You've got the coupling in the middle, The what would be the real one. You've got the buffers, they look really nice. They overhang the frame a little bit, but these locos are so small, this would be the standard position on the wagons. And you can see like the wagon at the back is slightly overhanging it a wee bit. You can't see it on that side because the angle I've got it on. But yeah, it's slightly more slimmer than um, other locos. But yeah, and then you've of course got your red buffer beam, and that looks really good. We'll zoom out now. You've got other bits of detail like your cab headlight 
there's a little air horn there I believe you can see the radiator cap there and the, um, the fuel cap and you've got your tiny exhaust which is going up there and again clear windows with a black border they look really really good and you can also see those handrails to the cab a little bit better on the side view as well. A little bit further out and you can also see this bar that runs along the bottom. That's obviously to stop anything going underneath the wheels. And then of course our troublesome little connector plug which is sticking out too far. The other side of the loco I'm pretty sure will be exactly the same. Which it is. You've got your plates and pretty much it's exactly the same I think except it's the other way around. You've got the, um, the door handle, of course, the other way around. It's, yeah, pretty much exactly the same as the other side, but back to front. One thing I didn't mention, though, which I should point out, is the loco on the frame, it's got these little eye hook things there, and that would be, I'm pretty sure, what it would be fastened down with on a wagon, because I have seen these, like, being towed by other trains, but on a, like, a well wagon, and I'm pretty sure that's what would be used to fasten it down. Now, cab detail on this, I haven't actually looked inside one of these to see if there's any cab detail from where I'm at. Uh, I can see something in there, there's a little, um, could be a seat or a brake, I don't know, the little black thing there, I don't know what that is. Um, no, there doesn't really look to be any cab detail in there, I can't see it in great depth if there is any, I'll mention it, or if I can get a better shot, I'll try. For now, I'll leave it there. Can't really see much going on in there. We'll move on to the back of the loco and the buffer beam and everything there. That's all very much the same as the front, but you've also got on the back here, you've got the number one print, which is there, which is done the same as the GCR print on the side there. And that looks really nice. You've got the headlight, well, the rear light, I should say, which is on the back. It looks good, and then of course your windows again. And we'll have a quick look at the roof. You can see there is, in fact, I shouldn't be using my fingers, I should use the pointer because it looks a lot better. You can see just there, that's the exit for the exhaust, right there. And then you've got some rivet detail in your divider line there, and the lines around the side, and then again your fuel cap and your radiator cap there, and the dividing lines. So that is the little Rustin. We'll take a look at the wagon. Very basic wagon, of course. And these are standard, the standard wagon that comes with the Rustin Locos. And, of course, as I said earlier, the reason that these come with these Locos is for pickup power. So these wheels do have pickups fitted that go through those plugs into the Loco. So, brown wagon is a standard colour. Some of the Rustins have wagons that are coloured to match, but this is just a brown one. It's got GCR pallet 1 on there, and it says load 10 tonnes, and that looks really nice. You've got all sorts of other bits of detail going on there. I can see the wooden um, planks at the top. That looks really, really nice. That's a slightly different shade of brown. And then you've got pretty basic ends. You've got buffers, couplings spoke wheels, you've got your nice frame with your um, brake rigging there, that looks really good. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to turn it upside down, I'll turn the whole thing upside down, I'll zoom out a tad more, just so you can see underneath both of these. So you've got Hornby made in China, it's actually up upside down, I should, I'll turn it around the other way so you can see it the right way around. Apologies for my fingers in the way. But you can see, um, the gears, which are underneath for the loco, you can see the screws that undo the body, and um, yeah, the Hornby, Hornby badge underneath there, and you can see where these pickups go. So you've got the pickups which are located, pretty sure that's it there, it's one of the ones that rubs on the inside of the wheel, and that's just connected via wires through there and goes across where the drawbar is into the locomotive. It's just a boost for it going over points and stuff like that, so it just doesn't cut out. Because this, as you can see, a wagon is a short wheelbase. That's a very short wheelbase. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll pick it back up now. Put it back on its wheels. 
So yeah, a lovely looking logo. The only dilemma at this stage is simply the plugs. Everything else looks really nice. It's very tidily finished. There's no nothing sloppy that I can see. Looks really, really good. It's just those plugs. So I'll put it on my double O gauge layout now. We'll give the thing a run, see how it copes. I'm going to be like running it backwards and forwards just to test it from right out of the box. Then I'll give it a little bit to run in and then, um, yeah, we'll give it a good running session and I'll put some other wagons in behind and we'll see how many wagons this can tow. We'll, we'll put a big load in behind. We'll try, I'll, I'm going to do about 10 wagons. It probably won't work, but we'll see how it goes. So we'll head to the track. So there we go, the loco's down on the track now, and it looks absolutely stunning. I love this green. As you can see, compared to the trees that are in the background, this one really stands out. It's almost the same, it's pretty much exactly the same colour as that door on that shed there. It looks, yeah, very similar. But yeah, that, the loco's slightly brighter. So I will give this thing a run for its very first time. We'll give it a quick test, see if it'll move to start off with. I'm hoping this issue with the... Connecting plugs is not going to play any havoc. We'll soon find out. Let's give it a run. I will turn the control on and see if it will move. Right. Forwards direction. It goes! Look at that! It moves! That's the good bit. <laughs> it works. Right. Let's go in reverse. Tell you what. Considering it's brand new, hasn't been run. I'm just going to leave that crawling like that. That's not bad. That is not bad. Really good crawl. I'll try that again. In reverse. That's good. That's really good. So it runs pretty well, so I'll, I'll back it up now. Run it past a little bit quicker, see how that looks. Yeah, that ain't bad. Cool, so that looks good. So I'm going to start off running it, and I probably will for the whole video. I'll run this thing with the wagon connected as it came with the little drawbar. I'll be running it on the inside line. I might possibly run another one of my little Rustins on the outside track so we can see them both running but the performance of that right out of the box is really really good it runs a nice good crawl I am going to try and keep this loco at a slower speed when it's running I'll let it run in and um, yeah we'll put some wagons in behind it after that so we'll set it on its way around the track So that has had a good chance to run in, and it is running extremely well. I'm really impressed with the speed that it's been running at, and it hasn't been juttering or anything. The plugs have not played any problems at all. It's been running really well. It is a shame, though, that they're standing out, but I'll sort that at a later date. Anyway, I'm going to do what I said before. Ten wagons. Let's see if this Rustin can cope with them.
So this is certainly one for the books, folks. I've never done this with a Rustin before. So it very much is a first for me. There are 10 wagons besides the locomotive and the flat car. There's 11 total if you're counting the flat car. But still, very big load. I don't normally overload locomotives. It's something I don't like to do. But in this particular case, I'm very keen to see how much one of these will haul. I've never actually bothered trying it. I don't know why. Oh well. Let's turn it up and see if it will do it. Here we go. Flipping it. No sweat with it. It's just... Just like it's done it every day. Flippin' heck. I tell you what folks, it is not really giving any strife haul in that, it's just one consistent speed. Really good. Now just for a comparison of what other Rustins are available, here is the DVLR one, which is named Jim. A very lovely locomotive. So as can be seen, this little loco can haul a load really well. So. I'll take the wagons off now and just run it on its own again with the other Rustin. So there we go folks, that is Hornby's Rustin and Hornsby 48DS in the GCR green colours. I found one interesting thing out about the engine, it does have a name. I only just found it out. That little plate there is actually the name. It is called Quag. Q-W-A-G, Quag. What an unusual name, but it's an unusual loco and an unusual colour, so it suits. I think it's quite cool. But yeah, quag number one. Very unusual. But yeah, a really good loco. Performs really well. The details have been applied really well to this. Good slow speed runner. Really, really good. It's just unfortunate about that issue with the plugs. But it's not affecting the loco's performance. So for now, I'm just going to leave well enough alone. But when it does come time to service this engine or take the body off for anything, I will need to sort that. And I may eventually do a video of how to fix the problem, but I'm not bothered by it. I'll just go leave well enough alone for now. Anyway, there's another box unboxing video to come up still, which will be quite an interesting one because it's a continuation of another video, but the loco is still yet to arrive. It'll be a little while yet, I think about another week, but that is still to come. But I hope this one has been a good unboxing video. Anyway, it's because... I haven't seen anyone else do one on this particular version of the 48DS yet. But, uh, yeah, no, I've enjoyed it. It's been good. Anyway, hope you've all enjoyed it out there. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.